Okay, Coach, we're on the second part of this uh, podcast, and I just wanted to ask you a few questions regarding last time you talked about the cardiovascular and the uh, muscles and everything, but I want you to focus on the muscle part of it this time, especially for me to help me figure out how to strengthen my hip area, which is, for me, one of my weaker sections. Right, right. Hip extensions. See, again, I mean, it's a good uh, segue. Uh, you're right, Shubha. In my last message, I was focused on uh, the cardiovascular portion of our overall training, how cardio and how vascular portion gets, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, comes into play, builds up the aerobic efficiency and running efficiency overall, how does it improve? And definitely this time, uh, let's talk a little bit about on the muscle side, the next part of that chain. And uh, you mentioned a little bit on the hip side. So uh, I just want to say one quick thing on that. We will talk a little bit more about it in the next messages. Mm -hmm. But one of the... So there are three key muscle groups that need to be engaged during run. The first one, if you look from the bottom right, uh, all the muscles in the calf muscle area, the Achilles tendon area, those muscles need to get activated for you to uh, propel yourself properly. So if those muscles are weak, you get Achilles tendonitis, the plantar fascia, all those issues. Yes. The second group of muscles that are super important for uh, for your propulsion is, as I've always told you, the hip area. Mm-hmm. Hip extension, the glutes, the yes. uh, ITL muscle on the right hand side, the, uh, not the ITL, the IFL uh, muscle on the on the on the side of your hips, um, the 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 uh, the IT band that goes up to your knees and the various portions of your thighs. This is another super essential uh, portion of it. And your hip extension is an ability to open up your hip when you're running. Like, uh, you know, if you want to understand what is hip extension, you stand and just push your thigh backwards. You know, just stand and push your thigh backwards. Mm -hmm. You see that? That is what is hip extension. Literally, if you push your thigh backwards, what is happening, just uh, note down, note what is happening on your on your uh, waist, on your hips. Yeah. What you is happening feel like there? The muscles are pulling in and out. Correct. You see the two things. If you stand and push your thighs backwards, two things happen. One is something happens on your way, on your hip, and your glute gets activated. Mm-hmm. This this combination is what is hip extension, and this is a very critical movement for running. Those of you who have got this hip extension issues, then you have some muscles on the sides that needs to be strengthened, which I'll provide you a little bit of uh, uh, mm-hmm. details on that. And yeah. your glute needs to get activated yes. and strengthened. These two things, when you do, your hip extension gets better, which is a very important portion of running. And that will also help you. And we will talk about that a little bit more, uh, Shubha. Definitely. Okay. So that's yeah. the second portion. And the third one is your core. The core muscles need to be engaged as well for you to uh, run uh, better. So these three muscle groups are reasons why we, when you do strength training, we try to attack these muscle groups in a very systematic uh, uh, manner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's a little bit on the muscle side. Thanks for that uh, question. It's an important uh, discussion we need to be having. Yeah, and this is showing why it's so important that you can't cheat on strength day saying that, oh, I did my strength, but you really, all you did was get up out of your seat and stand up. <laughs> Yes, strength is critical and we will discuss that a little bit more on the strength portion of it. Yes. But today, Shubha, I wanted to talk a little bit about on the cardiovascular musculoskeletal portion. Let's talk, let us understand what is happening on the muscle side of the uh, the training portion of the muscles. Now, to make it very simple, guys, there are three types of muscles that all of us have. Um... You know, muscle type A, which is called as the slow twitch fiber muscles. Mm -hmm. And then there are two other types which comes under the fast twitch fibers. Like you can talk about it as fast twitch A, fast twitch B. So there are three muscle types. Think of it as muscle A, one slow twitch. Muscle type B, fast twitch into two groups, A and B Mm -hmm. uh, within that. So there are three muscle groups. Um, There are a lot of kind of things that are different for these muscle groups. But to put it simply from a runner's perspective... When you do long distance endurance runs, the slow twitch muscles are what is being used for you to propel your body. Let's keep going back. For you to propel your body to run for long distances. Okay. When you do sprint, that means up to about 800 meters race, 
you use the fast twitch type B muscles a lot. That's what is basically using. So essentially the slow twitch muscles or what we call it as aerobic muscles. That means it works during, with a lot of oxygen. It works well with a lot of oxygen in the system. And fast twitch muscles or anaerobic muscles, it works well when there is not uh, there is an oxygen deficiency in the yeah. system. Mm-hmm. Okay. The type A fast twitch, the, the third muscle group that I was telling you about, that is what is the most interesting muscle group. Because that muscle group has the ability to become either a fast twitch or a slow twitch, depending upon how you train your body. So what I mean by that is there is a whole set of muscles in your body that is waiting for some cue from you to get activated in whichever direction you want, right? So if you think about it, if you're a marathon runner, Mm -hmm. you want to activate those third muscle group into more slow twitch muscle group. That is when you will have more slow twitch to help you guide your long distance running efficiency. Right? You want more muscles to help you in the long distance running. Yes. Right? So that how gives you the endurance to keep moving. Exactly. So at the end of the day, from a muscle standpoint, you want more muscles to help you. Yes. Right? And there is, a, as I'm just saying, there is a whole group of muscle group, which let's call it the transformation muscle group. It can get transformed to slow twitch or a fast twitch, depending upon the body cue that uh, it is giving, the body is giving you. And the body cue... Mm-hmm. Is the aerobic state or the anaerobic state. Wow, okay. So that means if you are constantly training in aerobic state, then this third group of muscle set is getting the cue that, oh, I need to convert myself into the aerobic muscles or slow twitch muscles. Oh, slow twitch. Or in other words, it starts, you, the body gets more and more slow twitch muscles, which is better for long distance running. If you're constantly running in anaerobic state, then these muscle group gets the cue that, you know what, maybe I need to convert myself into a fast twitch muscle. Or in other words, it is just getting converted into the sprint muscle group. Right? So that is why, if you don't run your CP runs properly, if uh, CP is essentially what? Uh, conversational Co- pace or where you are able to talk like this without feeling like you're losing your, getting out of breath. Correct. Or in other words... CP runs are aerobic runs. So if I'm asking you to do CP runs, which is the bulk of our training, and during those CP runs you run faster, what happens is you are running in anaerobic state. When your expectation is to run in aerobic state. not what you want if you want to do a half marathon or a full marathon. Correct. So ultra but, marathon. Correct. But coming back to the muscle side, when you're running in anaerobic state running, you are converting more of this type B fast twitch muscles to type A fast twitch muscles instead of the slow twitch muscle, which is what you want. Mm -hmm. Right? Or in other words, you are developing the wrong muscular system for the run that you are trying to do. And as a result, you are not getting better in endurance running. Yes. So that is why you will see most coaches say, run slow now to become faster later. Very important thing for you all to understand. When you run slow now, Mm -hmm. that means you are running more and more in aerobic state. That means you are converting more and more of the type B fast twitch muscles to slow twitch muscles. That means you are getting more and more slow twitch muscles in your body. And as a result, over time, you are having more muscles to give you endurance runs. And thereby, you are able to increase space in endurance runs. So, uh, in other words, doing the runs the way you are asking us to do it, you are ensuring that when we say we want to go from a 5K to 10K to half marathon, we can do so without feeling that we're overexerting ourselves. That is correct. So, run slow to run fast later mm-hmm. is the message I want to give you in message two. Convert more of your fast twitch muscle, con, uh, this fast twitch muscles that can be converted. Convert more of that into slow twitch muscles, and thereby you get more and more muscle strength and more and more muscle support for your long distance runs. Definitely. Hope, hope this makes sense. Thank you, Shubha, for this wonderful question. Thank you. Let's come back for the next message. Mm-hmm.